Hello everyone. Now let us discuss about powders part one. So what are powders? Pharmaceutical powders are intimate mixtures of dry, finely divided drugs or chemicals that may be intended for internal or external use. Powders represent one of the oldest dosage forms and it is a preparation in which drug is blended with other powdered substances and used for either internal or external purpose. Powders as a dosage form permits the drugs to be reduced to a very fine state of division which often enhances their therapeutic activity or efficacy by an increase in the dissolution rate and or absorption. Divided powders are also found to be convenient for administering the administering drugs that are extensively bitter, nauseous or otherwise to taste which are bitter and nauseous to taste they can be conveniently administered by the help of powder dosage form. A good powder formulation has a uniform particle size distribution. If the particle size distribution is not uniform, the powder can segregate as per to particle size which may result in inaccurate dosing or inconsistent performance. So particle size distribution is very important in the manufacturing of powders. A uniform particle size distribution ensures a uniform dissolution rate if the powder is to be dissolved or uniform sedimentation rate if the powder is to be remained in the, in the form of a suspension and it minimizes the stratification when the powder is stored or transported. So uniform particle size is important for proper dissolution, uniform sedimentation and to minimize the stratification. Coming to the advantages, powders being solid dosage preparations, they are more stable than the liquid and semi-solid preparations. They are convenient forms to dispense large dose of drugs and they can be best administered in powder form by mixing them with food or drinks. Since powders are in the form of small particles, they offer a large surface area. Due to the small particle size, it increases the large surface area and are rapidly dissolved in the gastrointestinal tract, minimizing the problems of local irritation. More convenient to swallow, faster dissolution and absorption than the tablets or capsules is seen in powders. Powders offer a lot of flexibility in compounding of incompatible solids and possess good chemical stability. They are easy to apply. They absorb the skin moisture which leads to reduced friction between skin surfaces and it discourages the bacterial growth and has a cooling effect. And they can be applied to many body cavities such as ears, nose, tooth socket and throat. And they can be made into many different dosage formulations. Powders can be made into many different dosage formulations. Examples, capsules, tablets, powder for reconstitution, dusting powders, bulk powders, powders for inhalation, etc. Highly compatible compared to liquid dosage form and manufacturing of a powder is economic. Hence, the product cost is quite low as compared to other dosage forms. Coming to the disadvantages, they are less convenient to carry, especially for bulk powders. And they are not suitable for administering potent drugs with low dose. And they are difficult to mask the unpleasant taste of the drugs. And lightly fluffy powders may be inhaled by infants leading to breathing difficulties. One more disadvantage is variable dose accuracy and not suitable for drug inactivated. It is a not suitable form for drug inactivated in stomach or causes damage to stomach. They should be presented as enteric coated tablets. Powder dosage form is not suitable for drugs which are inactivated in the stomach and they, are, they can cause gastrointestinal damage. And they are not suitable for bitter, nauseating and corrosive drugs if are meant for oral administration. Difficulty of protecting hydroscopic, deliquescent or aromatic materials and are not suitable for drugs which are unstable in normal atmospheric conditions. They are susceptible to physical instability that is one more disadvantage and they are inconvenient to carry that we have discussed earlier. Coming to the classification of powders. Powders are categorized into six types. Bulk powders for external use, bulk powders for internal use, simple and compound powders for internal use, effervescent granules, eutectic mixtures 
and gadgets. Coming to bulk powders for external use. External bulk powders contain non-potent substances for external application. These powders are dispensed in glass, plastic, wide mouth bottles and are also and also in cardboard with specific method of application the bulk powders for external use are dusting powders snuffs dental powder and insufflations coming to dusting powders these are used externally for local application and not intended for systemic action the desired characteristics of powders include homogeneity non irritability free flow good spreadability and covering applicability capability good spreadability and covering capability adsorption and absorption cap capacity very fine state of subdivision and the capacity to protect the skin against irritation caused by friction moisture or chemical irritants these are some of the desired characters for dusting powders Dusting powders usually contain substances such as zinc oxide, starch and boric acid or natural mineral substances such as kaolin or talc. The talc may be contaminated with pathogenic microorganisms such as Clostridium tetani and hence it should be sterilized by dry heat. Dusting powder should not be applied to broken skin if desired powder should be micronized or passed through a sieve 80 or 100 sieve size of 80 or 100 Dusting powder should preferably be dispensed in stiffer top containers such containers provide the protection from air moisture and contamination as well as convenience for application Currently some food powders and talcum powders have been marketed as pressure aerosols and the dusting powders are employed chiefly as lubricants protectives absorbents antiseptics anti puritics and astringents and anti perspirants coming to the next category snuffs this is an example of snuff packed product These are finely divided solid dosage forms of medication dispensed in flat metal boxes with hinged lid and these powders are inhaled into nostrils for decongestion antiseptic and bronchodilator action The next is Dorche powder These powders are intended to be used as antiseptics or cleansing agents for the body cavity and most common for vaginal use although they may be formulated for nasal otic and ophthalmic use also a dorche powder formulation often includes aromatic oils and it becomes necessary to pass them through sieve number 40 or 60 to eliminate agglomeration and to ensure complete mixing this is an example of dorche powder povidone iodine betadine mixture vaginal dorch they can be dispensed either in wide mouth glass bottles or in powder boxes but the former that is wide mouth glass bottles are preferred because of the protection afforded against air and moisture an example of dorch composition is zinc sulfate magnesium sulfate boric acid oil of lemon and water quantities are not mentioned here just the substances are mentioned coming to the next category dental powders dental powders are rarely prescribed however this class of powders is interesting from the compounding point of view or compounding angle this preparation is a type of dentrifice meant for cleaning the teeth as such dental powders contain detergents abrasives antiseptics coloring and flavoring agents incorporated in a suitable base Generally the base is calcium carbonate. The detergent is in the form of soap and the abrasive action is provided by finely powdered fumistone. Essential oils are added to provide flavor and freshness to mouth as well as antiseptic action. The essential oils if present in smaller quantities are easily absorbed by calcium carbonate and fumis. This makes a uniform distribution of oil difficult. 
the best results are obtained if the oil is triturated into the in the soil in the solids the best results are obtained if the oil is triturated in the solids taking considerable care to distribute it uniformly this is an example of antibacterial denture cleanser dental powder the next category are insufflations insufflations are a class of powders meant for application to the body cavities example ear nose vagina etc the powder has to be extremely fine and must find an entry to the cavity deep enough to bring about its action at the site it is delivered to a affected part in a stream with the help of a device called insufflator which blows the powder to the site some of the insufflations contain volatile liquid ingredients which may require uniform distribution in the powder if the liquid ingredients are present in large quantity the liquid portion may have to be evaporated and generally evaporation is brought about slowly in a china dish which is heated on a water bath and the resultant powder is repowdered and sniffed through a sieve of a suitable size however the active volatile liquids present in small portions here you must remember active volatile liquids present in small portions should not be removed by evaporation but only incorporated by trituration in the powder the pharmaceutical industry packages the suffocation insufflations in pressured form example aerosols insufflations are packed in pressured form example is aerosols aerosols contain the medication in a stout container which is a suitable valve the delivery of the powder being accompanied by a liquefied or compressed gas propellant of a very low boiling point on pressing the actuator of the valve the propeller delivers the medicament in a stream propellant the propellant delivers the medication in a stream now coming to bulk powders for internal use previously we have discussed bulk powders for external use now we are discussing bulk powders for internal use the bulk powders contain many doses in a wide mouth container that are that is suitable to remove the powder by a teaspoon the non potent substances are used in bulk powder form the drug must be non potent and it is used in the form of bulk powders in order to be used in the form of bulk powders for internal use the drug must be non potent example is antacid laxative purgative etc here is an example of composition of bulk powders for internal use rhubarb powder light magnesium carbonate heavy magnesium carbonate ginger powder next is simple and compound powders for internal use these are unit dose powders normally packed in properly folded papers and dispensed in envelopes metal foils small heat sealed plastic bags or other containers usually for the preparation of simple powders the ingredients are weighed correctly and blended by geometrical mixing in an ascending order of weights the mixture is then either divided into blocks of equal size numbers of blocks representing the number of powders to be dispensed or each dose is weighed separately and placed on a powdered paper the paper is then folded according to the pharmaceutical art and placed in either an envelope or a powder box next category are effervescent granules this class of preparations can be supplied either by compounding the ingredients as granules or dispersed in form of salts the ingredients whether in granular form or in the salt form react in the presence of water evolving carbon dioxide gas effervescent means gas evolving so the ingredients whether in granular form or in the salt form they react in the presence of water and evolve carbon dioxide gas for evaluation of for evolution of the gas two constituents are essential a soluble carbonate such as sodium bicarbonate and an organic acid such as citric or tartaric acid 
the preparation can be supplied either as a bulk powder or distributed in individual powders powder packs example here you can see the example urine lemon flavor effervescent powder relief for painful burning symptoms of urinary tract infection there are three alternative methods for dispensing the effervescent granules depending upon the nature of prescription if the effervescent salt are prescribed to be dispensed in bulk form no granulation is necessary the ingredients are mixed uniformly and directions are stated on the label to add the prescribed quantity to water before use second category if the effervescent effervescent salt is prescribed in divided doses the ingredients which cause effervescence are mixed with water are closed separately in papers of different color the ingredients which cause the effervescence on mixing with water are closed separate, separately in papers of different color the patient is advised to take one powder of each color and add to the water before use quantities of sodium bicarbonate and organic acid it can be either citric or tartaric are equimolecular in proportion third category in the third case the product contains all ingredients mixed together in a granular form the preparation of granular products requires pharmaceutical technique if sodium bicarbonate and citric acid are taken in equimolar proportion and mixed to make granules the quantity of water of crystallization liberated from the citric acid is large enough to make the mass wet and the carbon dioxide may be liberated during the preparation itself if one tries to substitute citric acid by tartaric acid which contains no water of crystallization it may not be possible to form a mass necessary for granulation these are the challenges whenever citric acid is employed the water of crystallization liberated from the citric acid is large enough to make the mass wet and the carbon dioxide is liberated during the preparation itself which is not ideal and if one try if one tries to substitute the citric acid by tartaric acid which contains no water of crystallization it may not be possible to form a mass necessary for granulation two cases challenges are there so therefore both citric acid and tartaric acid are taken in suitable proportions before leaving a little acid in surplus other than the quantity required to neutralize sodium bicarbonate this surplus is necessary to give the final preparation an acidic taste that is more palatable and there is a certain loss of weight of such preparation due to the loss of water in drying the granules and partial loss of carbon dioxide due to its release during the preparation heating is done on the water bath keeping all the ingredients thoroughly mixed in a porcelain dish and gentle application of heat liberates the water of crystallization from citric acid and the mass tends to be coherent which is ideal prolonged heating may result in the complete evaporation of released water leaving the product in the dry lump in the form of a dry lump which cannot be rendered into granules which is undesired the coherent mass is transferred from the porcelain dish to an inverted sieve of suitable aperture size kept over a glazed paper and the mass is pressed through the sieve taking care to change the position of the sieve cover taking care to change the position of the sieve cover the paper to prevent the formation of lump of the sieved granules we should take care that lump of sieved granules should not be formed the granules are dried in an over oven taking care to regulate the temperature which should be generally kept below 80 degrees celsius the operation requires considerable skill and experience to obtain granules of uniform size and of and an elegant product if necessary 
the dry granules are passed through a sieve of appropriate size to break large granules which result due to sticking of the sieved wet granules and the water of crystallization of the citric acid and water from the reactions make the material coherent in case of effervent granules the loss of weight occurs during the granulation due to evaporation of damp mixture and loss of carbon dioxide the loss is constitute approximately 1/7 of the weight of the powder used and must be allowed for when calculating the amount to be prepared the next type is eutectic mixtures they are defined as mixtures of low melting point ingredients which on mixing together turn to liquid form due to depression in melting point of the mixture below the room temperature eutectic mixture is defined as a mixture of low melting point ingredients when on mixing together turn to liquid due to the depression of melting point of the mixture below the room temperature they are mixtures of substances that liquefy when mixed rubbed or triturated together the melting points of many eutectic mixtures are below the room temperature examples of substances which tend to liquefy on mixing are camphor thymol menthol sarol any two of these drugs turn to liquid when mixed and this problem during formulation of powders of such material can be solved by using inert adsorbent inert adsorbent such as starch talc lactose to prevent the dampness of the powder and dispensing the components of the eutectic mixture separately now coming to catchets catchet as a unit dosage form was very popular some time back presently they are seldomly used and have been replaced by capsules like capsules they can be easily filled and sealed at the dispensing counter and this dosage form holds larger quantity of medication as compared to capsules since the catchets are made of flour and water they are easily damaged in handling further this dosage form offers little protection against light and moisture due to its size and shape a catchet is difficult to swallow and the process of filling is similar to that of capsules dry drug the drug product is placed in one of the two halves of the catchet the upper half is then placed over it and pressed with the help of suitable device the flange of the upper plate is moistened carefully taking care not to wet it with the help of a dampener the sealing takes place due to the moisture between the flanges of the upper and the lower half and pressure over the flanges about 15 minutes are allowed for drying of the seal and after this time the middle portion of the catchet is lightly pressed to ensure complete sealing in absence of a machine a pharmacist can improvise and use two bottles two bottles the mouths of which are broad enough so that flanges of the plate upper and the lower are kept over the mouths of the bottle just rest over them and the drug is transferred to one of the plates resting over the mouth of the bottle kept vertically on the working bench and the flange of the empty half resting over the mouth of another bottle is moistened moistened with the help of damp camel hair brush and the empty half of the catchet is then placed over the other half in which the medication is kept so that the flanges of two halves are perfectly superimposed the second bottle is then inverted and brought over the superimposed catchet and carefully put over the flange and pressed in position without disturbing the rest of the catchet in the absence of machine a pharmacist can use two broad mouth bottles to prepare the catchets as discussed here this provides a good seal and the catchets are dry sealed also like capsules catchets are also expected to remain untouched by hand and one should use gloves while handling them since they are 
there are inherent losses of the drugs in this operation also like that powders like that of powders and capsules the quantities of each ingredient should be weighed for an extra powder over the numbers to be dispensed here you can see the schematic representation of putting the capsules here the powder is filled this step indicates moistening the lids and pushing out the finished capsules from here here you can see the capsules are dispensed in white mouth bottles of glass or plastic with a perfectly fitting cap and the patient should be instructed to keep the bottle securely securely closed capsules are of two types wet seal capsules and dry seal capsules coming to wet seal capsules they are made up of two similar convex halves having flat edges the weighed amount of powder is placed in one half and the edges of the other are moistened with water and placed exactly over the first half containing the powder and the edges of the both half are pressed together so as to make a perfect seal this is the preparation of wet seal capsules now coming to dry seal capsules they consist of two halves the upper half and the lower half the upper half is little larger in diameter than the lower half the powder is filled in the lower half and the upper half is fitted over it like a lid on a box capsule is dispensed dispensed in a box if necessary the empty spaces are filled by cotton or wool so as to fix them properly in the boxes and the boxes are labeled with direction of use immense in water for few seconds and then swallow with draught of water thank you for watching please subscribe for further videos on pharmaceutical sciences and other related disciplines